last episode of this series, we learned about the capture of John Andre and how the three men set out that day to capture Colonel James Delancey, who was the head of a group known as the Cowboys. Now, the Cowboys were an infamous group of Tory soldiers who would basically raid throughout Westchester County and wreak havoc everywhere they went. And Colonel James Delancey, we also learned, was the brother of Westchester Lodge, or Huguenot Lodge 46's second master, Oliver Delancey. We also learned that Oliver Delancey was someone who resigned his commission in the British Navy because he did not want to fight against his neighbors. His brother was quite different. He became very notorious in Westchester County. In May of 1781, Colonel James Delancey, 200 foot soldiers and 60 dragoons made their way up from what is today the Morrisania section of the Bronx. They made their way up to northern Westchester. Their goal was to attack Pines Bridge. Now, if you drive along the Taconic today, you will see the Pines Bridge Road exit. That is named for the Pines Bridge that crossed over the Croton River. This bridge was part of a vital line of communication for the Continental Army and the Continental Army always garrisoned troops there to guard it. Guarding the bridge that day was the Rhode Island Regiment, Faith, Hope, and Charity, core tenants of Freemasonry. Most of us will recognize the Masonic symbol for hope as being an anchor. We're not the only ones who have adopted the anchor as a symbol of hope. The state of Rhode Island within their flag has a giant anchor with the word hope underneath it. And back in the American Revolution, there was the Rhode Island Regiment, which was composed predominantly of African Americans. And upon their helmet, they had a giant anchor. The anchor is a symbol of hope comes straight from Hebrews 6, verse 19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Rhode Island Regiment was predominantly composed of African American men as well as some Native Americans. So that morning, the bridge was being guarded by a Lieutenant Greenman and some troops. Nearby was Colonel Christopher Green, in command of the regiment, Colonel and brother Christopher Green. Now, Christopher Green was the cousin of the Major General Nathaniel Green that we have spoken about so much in this series. He was also a Masonic brother, having been initiated into the craft in Rhode Island at St. John's Lodge. Unfortunately, Christopher Green would lose his life that day. You can visit his memorial at the Presbyterian Church. Now, if you're heading east on Crompound Road, it's going to be on your left-hand side, but it is right at the front of the cemetery. Today you can come to Yorktown Heights and visit this monument to the events that happened along the Croton River that early morning in May of 1781. Now, I remember a few years ago I was driving in Yorktown and I saw this monument for the first time. I have to say my jaw absolutely dropped. I could not believe what I was seeing and I was like, what is that? It was so lifelike, the, the position of the statues, like they were just about to attack. You could almost feel the battle happening as you looked at it. Just was like, what happened here in Yorktown Heights? I had no idea. Didn't realize it was a little further away from here, but boy, this monument really spoke to me. The, the expression on the faces of these uh, statues, the poses, uh, this gentleman here with a flintlock pistol in one hand and a hatchet in the other, Christopher Green with his sword, and of course the uh, Rhode Island Regiment soldier with the long musket sticking out from the monument. It really is a stunning work of art. Little did I know at the time that uh, the second master on my lodge's brother was responsible for the actions of the British that day. I had no idea who Christopher Green was, that he was a Masonic brother and the cousin of the very famous Major General Nathaniel Green. I also didn't know that he was buried right along Crompound Road. That said, I, I highly encourage you, if you're a Masonic brother, delve into the history of your Masonic Lodge. You will never know what you discover until you go look, and I promise you, you will discover some interesting stuff.